Good morning. If you would uh, stand and worship with us. Amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery. How you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Hallelujah! 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 Welcome to Starkville First United Methodist Church, our contemporary worship service. We're glad you're here. We hope that you'll take a moment to register your attendance with us with the pads that are found on the end of your pews. A few announcements. If you want to be seated, we'll go through those. As you can see in our contemporary service, we are going through some transitions. We are going through some changes. If you would like to be involved in those changes, if you would like to be involved in the band, if you would like to be involved behind the scenes, we invite you to come Tuesday night. Uh, we'll be meeting over here in this room. It is C126, right over here in the corner. And it will be from 6 on. And we're going to get together and we will be discussing the uh, 
new service, the, the way in which the service is going to go, and we're very excited about it. As you can see, we've got a lot of new faces up here and a lot of good things happening, so we encourage you to come out and be a part of that. Also, we have something very, very exciting going on within the church this summer. It is our Cross Fitness Program. We encourage you to be part of that, and what it is is it is a spiritual and physical exercise throughout the summer, and we have two gentlemen with Cross Fitness with us this morning. Cole Tyler, will y'all stand up this morning so everybody can see y'all? We're glad to have y'all with us. They will be around after service this morning to answer questions about the program. It will meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's $100 for church members, and basically what you're getting is personal training two times a week all through the summer for $100. Uh, if you're not a member, it's $125. We encourage you to be involved in this. It's not just this church, but it's going to be the community. We're very excited about it. We're glad to have y'all with us this morning. Also, don't forget about our Nash Street dinner tonight. That is the fundraiser for our missions team. Uh, we hope that you'll come out and support not only the missions group, but also Nash Street. We're glad that you're here this morning. We hope that you'll take a moment and pass the peace among one another. All right, uh, feel free to remain standing or be seated uh, as we continue in worship. Oh 
Thank you. Y'all may be seated. What about this news praise band, huh? Aren't they doing a wonderful job? If our ushers would come forward, we're now going to receive our offering as our scripture is read. Our scripture comes to us this morning from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested upon each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them was heard speaking in a native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we can hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phygra, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. 
All were amazed and perplexed at this, saying to one another, What does this mean? Let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you so much for this day of Pentecost. We thank you for this day when we can gather together and worship you. We pray, Lord, that you bless these gifts that have been given to us. Lord, we pray that we return them to you for the using of thy kingdom and thy ministry here on earth. God, we pray this morning that you be with each and every person that is here. We pray that you be with those who could not be with us this morning. We pray, Lord, that as we are here, that we open our hearts and our minds and our ears to your message. May we be receptive. May we carry forth your message out into the world and share your love with all that we encounter. God, forgive us for our many sins. Be with us now. May it be your voice that is heard and not my own. We ask these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. You know, it's, it's interesting to me. I have noticed that when you go to Toys R Us, and I've been doing that a lot lately. I don't know why. But when you go to Toys R Us, and you buy a toy and you go to check out, they do something very, very interesting. They tell you, oh, this particular toy takes three AA batteries. Do you have those batteries, or would you like to purchase some today? Now, I was thinking about that, and not only is that a good marketing strategy, but it also helps adults that maybe get in a rush and forget that this toy takes batteries. A simple don't forget the batteries makes them a little extra money, and it can save us a big headache when we get home. But it got me to thinking. It got me to thinking, this is something that continually halts the church, doesn't it? Batteries. Forgetting batteries. It continually halts the church. What does that mean? We have forgotten the source of our power in church. We have forgotten, if you will, the batteries. We leave behind what is essential to the life of the community of faith. We have forgotten where our power supply comes from, and that power comes from the Spirit of God. That's where many churches are today. That's where many individuals are today. They're trying to operate without batteries. What happens if you go and you get in your car and you attempt to crank your car without a battery? Nothing happens. You don't go anywhere. What happens when, when your child receives this new toy that you've purchased and, and their eyes light up and then you open it for them and you give it to them and they go to play with it and no batteries. Nothing happens. A marvelous toy just becomes something else in the house. Ever since Christ's ascension, the disciples and the women and the brothers of Jesus had been devoting themselves to prayer in the upper room. They had been preparing themselves to receive the Holy Spirit that Christ had promised each and every one of them. They were all together in one place and then suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind and it filled the whole house. And they saw tongues of fire which seemed to rest above each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with one another in tongues. Our scripture tells us that there were Jews living in Jerusalem from every nation on earth. And when this sound occurred, a large multitude of them, they came together. And they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing the disciples in their own native language. They were perplexed and they asked, are not all of these from Galilee? Aren't they all Galileans? How is it that they can speak in our own languages? We hear them in our own tongue speaking of the mighty deeds of God. Today is known as Pentecost. If you're not real sure what Pentecost is, there's a nice little statement in, in our bulletin, if you haven't seen that this morning, that describes the history of Pentecost and what that means to the church. But it is recognized as the church's birthday, if you will, the beginning of the church when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit to go out and to witness to all, to carry forth the message to many nations. We can learn from their experience. And we can be energized today. And we can be more productive for God if we remember our source of power. We have to remember that the church's power source is, in fact, the Spirit of God. 
If we're going to have energy and enthusiasm much like the early church did, we all have to pray for the Spirit of God to fall afresh on us each and every day. Anytime we try to substitute another source of power for God's power, we have trouble. We have trouble. It makes no difference what that power may be. Going back to an example, if you have a flashlight that takes D batteries, if you try to put double A's in those flashlights, it's not going to work. As for the church, there is no substitute for the Spirit of God. No other power. It doesn't matter how enthused we are as individuals. If we don't have the Spirit of God living in our lives, if we don't have the Spirit of God overflowing out of us, if we don't have the Spirit of God in our church, then there is no power behind us. Sooner or later, we'll become tired. Sooner or later, the enthusiasm will go away. Sooner or later, things that were going so great will deteriorate. We have to remember that today, God's Spirit is the power for the church. You know, one effective way for growing churches in the world today is to focus on people's needs and begin groups within the church to meet the needs of those people. Now, these groups are a vital part of the church's ministry. These groups are great. They're what get people in the doors. We're here to meet people's social and emotional and even their physical needs as long as we don't lose sight of the central reason that we are here, and that is to share the love of Christ. If we do all of these programs and do not share the love of Christ with them, then we're doing them a great disservice as well as ourselves. All of our programs must be created with that in mind. If not, we run the risk of becoming like a hen. Now you ask, did I just say a hen? Yes, I did. There's a story about a hen, and the hen was quite amazing. If you put something red in front of this hen, the hen would lay a red-colored egg. If you put something green in front of the hen, the hen would lay a green-colored egg. But one day somebody made a mistake and put a plaid color in front of the hen, and the hen died trying to deliver the goods. Now think about that silly story for just a second. Think about that story for just a second. The hen died trying to deliver a culmination of things. That's the story of us. We begin to get so busy trying to be all things to all people that we lose sight of our central reason for being. Folks, it is not our job to be all things to all people. God is all things to all people. We are here to relay that message for God to share that love, to share that enthusiasm, to share that joy, to share that energy. But when we step into a role that is not our own, when we start taking liberties that are not ours, and we attempt to be all things for all people, we begin to die as a church. Nothing in the church can substitute for God's Spirit as the basic source of our power. We have to remember the reason why we have programs in our church and what is truly the power, the source of power behind those programs. Sure, it starts with somebody that is enthusiastic, but they're enthusiastic because they have been inspired by God. And those programs are truly successful if they share the Spirit of God. Too often we get caught up in the notion of creating programs simply to attract people rather than focusing on doing ministry with them. We worry so much about, about getting people in the doors. That's what we worry about today. And with good reason. And with good reason. The church is looked upon so negatively today because of the hypocrisy of some because of the attitudes of some, because of the actions of some. 
But we have to remember that a dynamic church attracts attention to itself. People cannot help but notice when the community sees miraculous changes in, in people's lives and hears the testimony of the believers. They won't be able to resist the temptation of taking a closer look, of finding out for themselves what's going on in that church. Of course, any time a person looks objectively at the claims of Jesus Christ, there is one conclusion that they can come to. Jesus Christ is the Son of our God. He is our Lord and Savior, and He has the power to change lives. But it's also very important to remember that there are some that are not going to take an objective look at the church. They are not going to be objective. They will be subjective, and they will continue to pass us by. If we truly rely on God's Spirit, we accomplish far more than we ever realize is possible. We learn that where God's Spirit is, there is unity. People of differing backgrounds, differing social classes, differing ethnicities, differing origins all heard the gospel in their own tongue on that day. Rather than fragmenting into tiny self-serving groups, they were what? What happened? Did one group go over here? Did, did one group scatter over here? What does our scripture tell us? Our scripture tells us that they, they came together. They came together as one cohesive whole. One day we're going to see how silly we are and how silly we've been about all the barriers that we have erected between people. When we let go and let God, when we let go and let the Spirit of God rule our lives and our church, in the presence of God there is unity, just on, as on that day of Pentecost. But see, that's what's so difficult for churches. Some people have the Spirit of God in their life and they're, they're living that way. Others have agendas and they're living that way. It is when we come together living with the Spirit of God that unity is obtained. Of course, that's even more important, isn't it, when outsiders look in. There was a somewhat humorous story that, that came across not too long ago, and it was about two community fire groups, volunteer fire groups that, that were rivals really with one another. And a house that was kind of on the dividing line caught on fire. One group got there first and they began to fight the fire and then the other group showed up and they were upset because they thought that this other group had impeded on their territory. So what happened? A fist fight broke out. And while the firemen were fighting, this family's house and all of their possessions burned to the ground. You know, when I heard that story, when I, when I read that, I couldn't help but think about the church, sadly enough. Rather than fighting the fires of evil in this world, we would rather fight one another over agendas, over politics. It was not so with the church at Pentecost. They prayed together, they ate together, even shared possessions with one another. The source of the church's power is the Spirit of God. And where the Spirit of God is, there is unity. Where the Spirit of God is, there is also outreach to others. You know, that's one thing that I have, I have been amazed at since I have been in Starkville is I have never been involved with a church that has as much outreach as we do here. And for that, you are to be commended. But we also run a risk in that. We run a risk of becoming complacent in that, saying that we do enough already, never striving to do more. But we understand where the Spirit of God is, people concerned about sharing the good news of Christ with their families, with their neighbors, with their friends, they will reach out. The church at Pentecost was a rapidly growing church because they were reaching out. 
The greatest danger for the church is that we will experience God's power, God's electricity, but find no outlet. That we will experience God's power, but refuse to share it with others. That we will experience God's unity among ourselves, but shut others out. That we will have the joy of God's Spirit, but not try to bring joy to the world. This is why it is so important for us as Christians, for us as a church, to reach out to others in the name of Jesus Christ. To share that love, to share that joy. Repeatedly throughout the book of Acts, we see that the church was too powerful to be ignored. There was certainly a case for that on this day of Pentecost. After the sound of the wind and the sight of the flames, the crowds that had gathered at the house where this were taking place were amazed to hear the disciples speaking in different languages. They realized that something beyond the ordinary was happening on this day, and many of them were intrigued. And our text this morning ends with a question. What does this mean? That is the question for us today. What does Pentecost mean to us in 2010 in Starkville, Mississippi at First United Methodist Church? What does that mean to Greg? What does that mean to Sonny? What does that mean to Leon? What does that mean to each and every one of us? Unfortunately, today it means that too many times we have forgotten the batteries. The source of the church's power is God's Spirit. And I think that many of us have forgotten that, not only in the church, but in our lives as well. It's my prayer that on this Sunday, we experience the constant power of God's Spirit, not only in our church, but in our lives as well. Won't you pray with me? God, we... We thank you so much for this day. For this day when we can come and worship together. This day when we look at the beginning of the Christian church. When we look at Pentecost and we see the energy that was there. How that church was so powerful that it could not be ignored. Lord, may we always remember that you are the source of our power. Not only in our church, but in our lives as well. May we always seek to love others as you have loved us. May we seek to forgive one another as you have forgiven us. Be with us always. We ask these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. This morning the altar is open as always. If you would like to come forward and, and pray, I invite you to do so. If you would like to come forward and dedicate or rededicate your life to Christ, that invitation is open as well. If you would like to join the fellowship of our church, come forward expressing that. Do as you would like.
Uh, stand and join us for our closing chorus.
We're glad that you have been with us this morning. We hope that you have received a blessing from being with us. I remind you that Cole and Tyler from Cross Fitness will be here to answer any of your questions. I encourage you to stick around and talk with them. Now receive the benediction. Go in peace and serve the Lord. And remember that your Lord, your God, is your strength for power, your source of love in a time of unique. Amen.